Okay. Okay. Again. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. When Andy's uh, mother passed away, his father had already passed, and Eleanor was 19, and she was left to raise her brother, who was 13. And uh, they're both sides of the family were willing to. Uh, the mother's side was willing to take Andy and raise him down at Fort Monmouth. Yes. And Uncle. Uh, More or less split us apart. And right. Elmer would have no part of that. No. Nope. She, she quit college and she, she got an apartment and she was keeping them together. And uh, they had a little basement apartment in Irvington and she took care of Andy and. Stuyvesant Avenue. Yep. <laughs> and when we met, um, my mother, like I said, she was happy to cook for him, and uh, uh, Eleanor always felt like she was, uh, Andy was over our house too much, <laughs> and being, you know, a pest. But that wasn't true. Well, uh, you know, no, uh, oh, I hope it wasn't true. No, uh, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but she was, uh, oh, she kept, uh, Eleanor kept us on a, on a uh, close and narrow. Uh, I don't know if I'm jumping again, but uh, one of the things that Eleanor influenced, and I think James hold on, Paris hold on one second. We're getting a, we're getting two interviews going on. I got the kids upstairs. You can hear that. I mean, oh yeah, that'll interfere. Yeah, uh, we got Yeah, we're picking up everything. Yeah. See, yeah, ideally, I'd have a little lapel mics, and my job would have been so much easier because you just have your little mic, and I turn the game down, and we'd only hear you, and we'd be oh. set. Um, but you'd have to sit there holding these. Oh, there's the mic. You know. Oh. And the camera, you you might think, well, just put it on the camera. Well, first of all, you hear it on on something like that. And these cameras, we did a bunch of tests, and we found that you get a lot of noise. And huh. when this is all about just your voice coming through, without the clamor of normal life going on in the background, well, those poor kids have to just be like. For a whole hour, <laughs> they only get to have half the halves. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Um, so hopefully wasn't over too much. So uh, so, uh, so in addition to uh, Jan's parents, uh, mother uh, fattening me up, one of the uh, one of the things uh, that happened in our early going was uh, that uh, I was going to go to college. I was going to go to school. Fortunately, my parents. Uh, left a uh, uh, sufficient funds for me to be able to do that. My uncle John managed that, um, and and I was preparing to go to college and and I went to college. And by this time, uh, Jan and I were quite serious and uh, approaching the point where hey, we're going to get we're engaged or getting. We agreed ahead of time that we would not get married until after I graduated uh, my four years at Stevens uh, Institute, and we did do that. Uh, and, and it was actually a little bit before that, there was one other uh, thing that occurred, and that is Jan's sister, Dolores, and her husband and family moved out to California because of a job opportunity that came their way, Hughes Aircraft. Uh, before we were married, we had an opportunity to go and visit Jan's sister out in California, and and we took this uh, uh, we took this flight out to uh, California, uh, and of course, Jan's parents dropped us off at the airport. Uh, Jan's sister picked us up at the airport, so we were never alone together for any length of time. Uh, uh, we were always uh, we were always chaperoned and monitored, uh, and as a matter of fact, one of the things that concerned uh, uh, Dolores, uh, Jan's sister, is that I turned 21 while we were out in California, <laughs> and they thought, oh, <laughs> they're going to go off and do something. Or, but no, that didn't happen. We, we we stayed with them, and we had a wonderful time. We went to Disneyland. We went to Disneyland. That was four years old at the time, and it was wonderful. <laughs> That's great. So you started talking about, uh, let's go back a little bit further. Um, 
you're dating in Irvington, and just a, a little blip here, all I'm looking for is what were some of the places that you would go to on dates? So not a long one here, just, hey, so we would go to this. Well, one of the ones that comes to my mind. Hold on, give me a, when we were. When, <laughs> all right, when we were dating uh, in the early going, uh, we went to various places, movies and uh for pizza and, and such like, but one of the one of the ones that uh, I remember most uh, most vividly was uh, Asbury Park, New Jersey, which was in its one of its heydays at that point in time, and they had big stars performing in Asbury Park. K Star was uh, one of them. Uh, the names I don't even know. Teresa the, Brewer. Teresa Brewer. These are names that may or may not be recognized, but at any rate. That was one of the uh, one of the highlights of dating and going to uh, Asbury Park and seeing these wonderful shows. That that was a that was a good one. I don't know what. And else. I remember we would go for pizza, to Musto's Pizza, and you'd get a whole big pizza pie for seventy five cents, and you'd go to the movies for a quarter, and uh, gas was what. 25 cents 25, a gallon. 27 cents, yeah. And uh, yeah. my parents' house that they bought after we got married down in Bayville, they paid brand new $9,000 for it. Plus the land. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyway. So, Mom, um, tell us about when Dad proposed to you. When, when Dad? It was Thanksgiving, 1958. And we were going to Tootie's for, Tootie always had Thanksgiving. And my parents had gone ahead and we were in the living room and dad, I don't know if he got down on his knee or not. I don't think I, I don't, got on my knee. I don't knee. remember. But he got out this diamond and he proposed. And the diamond, unfortunately it was stolen since, uh, it was his mother's that was left to him for the girl he married. And that's the sad part of it being stolen is it was such... Uh, well, yes, yeah, so, uh, along those lines, the other thing that made it a little uh, a little disappointing that why that, you know, how it got stolen, that diamond uh, uh, was, was my mother's, but we went, <clears throat> or uh, actually we then, went to Frost Jewelers in Irvington, New Jersey and had a setting designed and they took they a took image a of Jan's hand and drew it out and they designed a setting for that diamond that would uh, uh, be used as the engagement ring and it was a very special design. Uh, unique. There was, there was not another one like it. Because uh, they kind of fit together. The, the wedding yeah. ring eventually fit into the diamond ring, the engagement ring, and it was was unique. So. Um, and that hurt when that, that was lost. As a matter of fact, I even went to try to see if Ross Jewelers were still around. I don't think they are. Mm. <laughs> but, uh, but that was uh, ninth, uh, November of 58 that we got engaged. So we were engaged like Ten months. Dad, uh, you were saying that you went to college. Why Stevens? Why engineering? When did you know? Something you always wanted to do? But... I guess one of the one of the things that influenced me was influenced you for what? What's that? Influenced you for what? If influenced yeah, let's, so me start, for... start that again. Just go ahead and start it again. Good catch, Mike. <laughs> I'm uh, learning. I... <laughs> Okay, I, uh, I, uh, I attended college, uh, Stevens Institute of Technology. One of the things that influenced me, well, actually, it was two things. One uh, thing that directed me towards a scientific uh, uh, engineering uh, application was my cousin, Ernie, Ernie Bubaka, who was, uh, was a, uh, uh, into television and electronics at the time. And of course, television at this time, I mean, we're talking about black and white television sets, vacuum tube technology, no color, uh, uh, screen sizes about seven inch screen size. Uh, on a, anyway, he was into that uh, and, and he was very impressive and I was very impressed by him. Uh, 
uh, as a matter of fact, he was my sponsor at confirmation. The second individual who really influenced me about Stevens was my cousin, uh, uh, cousin's husband, Skip McKay. This is my cousin uh, Lydia, uh, uh, who has since passed. But uh, uh, Skip McKay uh, did some traveling into New York City, and he, he would he was into sales and. I don't even remember exactly what, what the item was that he was uh, uh, involved with. But at any rate, he uh, said, hey, I have a meeting and a, and a, a, uh, to go to in New York City. You're going to come with me. I'm going to drive you by Stevens uh, campus, which is right across the r river from New York, and uh, take you and introduce you to that, uh, let you walk around, look around, introduce you. I had been looking at... Uh, brochure-wise, Stevens, MIT, Newark College of Engineering, uh, and some of them were kind of out of hand, out of uh, reach for me. But Stevens was in in reach, and I was impressed when I got there. And uh, that's how I uh, selected Stevens as my alma mater. And the first year of college was a little rough. Very and, rough. And. Um, <laughs> Andy was kind of like, mm, should I continue? And Skip was very influential in keeping him on track. So, yes, very much so. Mm -hmm. And that's maybe another influence as to how we we came to agree that all right, we would not get married until after I graduated. Mm -hmm. Um, you had a dog, Booty. Oh, <laughs> what, what? Bootsy. Bootsy, yeah. sorry, Bootsy. We had a dog named Bootsy. Now, this was before we were married. I was still in high school, and um, I was about to graduate. And uh, the only dog we ever had when I was a kid was a hunting dog named Daisy. But she was an outside dog, and I always loved dogs. So I would even put a picture of dogs on my blouse, you know, and as a big hint. Anyway, Andy knew Hit this. that I want a dog. I want a dog. So for graduation from high school, he gave me a puppy. And she was like eight weeks old, and she had four white paws, so we called her Bootsy. And um, she was smart, and my parents were like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe a dog. At this time in our lives, it, you know, we don't really need a dog, especially one in the house. Anyway, she became my mother's and father's best friend. My mother would hang wash on the line and Bootsy would, she'd drop a clothespin or something and Bootsy would go down the steps and bring the clothespin back up. Of course, my mother always had a cookie for her in her pocket. And um, after we got married, my mother and father, they said, oh, you know, it's not fair for that dog to be alone all day. So Bootsy wound up living in Bayville, going out on the boat with my father fishing and she was an important member of the family. Yeah. Unfortunately, she died around 12 years of age of heartworm, which we didn't know even about heartworm back then. And uh, uh, A couple of things about the acquisition of Bootsy. My sister helped me get <laughs> and select the dog. I selected the dog, but she more or less uh, helped me. And now we had this dog a day or two before it was due to give Jan uh, give it to her for her birthday. No, for graduation. For graduation, I'm sorry. Uh, so so uh, I had to go to school. Bootsy couldn't be left on. I mean, she's not house trained or housebroken yet. So Eleanor took Bootsy to work with her because she didn't have any place else to put her or keep her. And Eleanor worked at the Travel Bureau uh, yes. in Bluefield. Uh, and 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 Bootsy went to the travel bureau, and uh, uh, Eleanor's boss was not thrilled about it because Bootsy didn't keep quiet. <laughs> and and uh, but but it all worked out uh, that uh, that Bootsy survived that day and was given the next day. The other thing that came to mind is is the clothespin uh, item. When, when uh, Bootsy would go down and pick up a clothespin and, and, and uh, Jan's mother would give her a, give her a treat and uh, uh, Jan's mother would look at the clo 
Oh, that's a broken clothespin. You don't get a treat for that one. You've got to bring a whole clothespin on. So Bootsy only got treats for whole clothespins, not broken clothespins. <laughs>